So what we are going to do today is share a little bit of words, share some news. Um, we're excited about living in this day and age. We're excited about the time that we are living in. These are seasons that are seasons none of us have ever experienced. And I know that we've all said that over and over and over again, but it is true. And so um, I want to share with you where things are at for our church, uh, what's at stake. Uh, Sunday morning, I had planned to teach a message uh, on on not getting weary and doing well, but I'm going to save that for uh, another week because uh, some things have happened this week that I want to share with you today that I think are, are of vital importance <clears throat> to our church family. Uh, let me begin by just sharing with you that yesterday uh, I received in the mail a letter from the uh, county public health administration. Somebody turned our church in uh, to the county health administration to let them know that we were meeting inside when the orders of the governor were that churches should not be meeting indoors. And so that set off a whole range of things happening and taking place. A lot of thought, a lot of prayer <clears throat> has gone into uh, the, the communication that we've received. And uh, I did not obviously have this information uh, on Sunday or I would have shared it with you. Um, but I, I want you to know that we are the church of Jesus Christ. We are victorious. Uh, we don't live in fear. We're not afraid of anything or anyone. I mean, the devil who is evil uh, personified, has thrown his best shot at the church, and honestly, it's just not good enough. We serve a living God. We serve a risen Savior whose name carries with it the power of the resurrection. And so <clears throat> I want you to know that uh, we are living today in victory, not defeat. We're not mad at anybody. We're not angry with anyone. Uh, we have chosen to live in victory, to walk in victory. Uh, but <clears throat> what I hold before you is a letter from the county of San Bernardino. And this letter says that we must become immediately in compliance with the governor's orders to no longer meet indoors. Uh, and if we don't, <clears throat> then we have church under the threat of a $1,000 fine <clears throat> and jail for me for 90 days. And so I thought that I would address this biblically and in Scripture for both our Live at 1205 audience and tonight uh, our, our 7 o'clock uh, service that, that gets posted uh, uh, on our YouTube channel. And in addition to this, this coming Sunday, uh, I'm going to address it as well. So let me begin in Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, verse 27. And here's what the Bible says. Now, Paul is in trouble. He, he has done some things that, quite frankly, the authorities were not thrilled with. As a matter of fact, they threatened him. And the Bible says that, verse 27, Acts chapter 5, when they brought them, talking about the disciples, they set them before the council. See, that's what happens when you do not comply with the orders of the powers that be. You get an audience with the powers. You get an audience with the authorities. Actually, it was just not, he was just not put before the council. The Bible says he was also put before the high priest. That's found in verse 27. And then in verse 28, um, what were they saying to him? Here's what the Bible says. Did we not strictly command you to not preach in the name of Jesus? Did we not strictly command you? Some would say, but pastor, all you're being asked to do is to have church outdoors. 
All you're being asked to do is to not meet indoors. All they want is for us to wear face masks outdoors. Is that so hard? Is that so unreasonable? And my answer to that is, that's not hard. It's an inconvenience, but it's not hard. That's not the issue. The issue is, it is unreasonable. Actually, it's not only unreasonable, it's, it's unconstitutional. It, it is the removal of our constitutional rights to worship as we see fit. Others would say, but pastor, the scripture tells us to be subject to the governing authorities. Well, the Bible does say that. And actually what I want to do is I want to look at what the Bible says. In Romans chapter 13, and I'm going to turn there and, and read it so that uh, you can, can get an understanding of, of these verses. In Romans chapter 13, beginning at verse 1, the Bible says, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. So in verse 1, we read that the authorities are appointed by God. Then we go to verse 2, and it tells me that whoever resists the authority appointed by God resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Pretty strong stuff. So if you resist the authority that has been appointed by God, then you are bringing judgment on yourself. Verse 3, we are told for rulers or authorities are not a terror to good works, but they are a terror to evil, those who resist the authority. Do you want to be unafraid of the authorities? Then do what is good. And you will have praise from the same. For he, the rulers, the authorities, the council, Paul got set before, the disciples got set before, the high priest, he was set before. The Bible says he is is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. In other words, he can back up what he's asking you to do. He is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscious sake. So, we just read some very strong words about our submission to the authorities, to the rulers, to those in positions of power. And what I want to show you here is verse 4 where it says authorities are to be God's ministers to you, talking to believers, to disciples, to us, the church, for good. Authorities are to be God's ministers to the church, to believers, for good. And here's where people misinterpret the first five verses of Romans Chapter 13. If the authorities who are appointed by God, if these authorities aren't supporting believers for good, for God, for His purposes, for His kingdom, then we should not be submitting to them. As long as authorities stay in their rightful place as outlined by God and serve us, the believers, the disciples, 
for good, for God, for his purposes, then we need to be in submission to them. And the moment that they stop exercising their authority over us for good, for God, for his purposes, then we should stop submitting to them. Oh, pastor, you're getting radical. No, I'm just obeying the word of God. And if that's radical, so be it. Go, go back to Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Acts chapter 5, verse 29, because we read the first couple of verses, verse 27 and 28, uh, but we didn't read the, the last verse that I want to draw your attention to, and that's in Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Let me remind you, verse 27 they brought the disciples before the council and the high priest asked them, did we not strictly command you to not gather indoors as you worship? Well, that's what they say today. And look, you fill Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. In other words, you, you filled your churches with people. And we told you not to. We strictly forbade you not to. And here's what Peter and the other apostles answered and said. Verse 29. We ought to obey God rather than man. We ought to obey God rather than man. Listen. I will be judged by the authorities. I will be judged by public opinion. I've already received uh, uh, many comments on our, our social media platforms uh, letting me have it because I've opened the church up for worship and how reckless that is and how uh, that shouldn't be happening. And I don't care for the community. Do I not care for people. Well, actually, as a church, we do care for people. We, we care for people so much that if anyone has any concern about gathering, we provide for them a great expense, like most churches do, an online service so they can still be a part of us. And so I'll be judged by the authorities. I'll be judged by public opinion. But more important to me is what God will say when I stand before him. Did you obey man or did you obey me? And I want to be able to say, God, I, was, I followed your direction. The, I, I, this coming Sunday, I, we're, we're going to teach. I, I'm, I'm pouring through scripture to see the place of the church and, and what God's expectation of us is in terms of times when we have been told to, to shut down, when we've been told that we are not essential. I poured over scriptures, and I believe I'm going to present to you a strong case, biblically, scripturally, for us being open. I will not stand before God and say, I disobeyed your word, and I disobeyed what you said to, for, for me to do. I want to be able to stand and say, God, I, I did obey your word. And so, look, the truth is I, I doubt, I highly doubt that I'm going to be arrested and put in jail for 90 days. But let me say this, church. If I do get arrested and I get put in jail for 90 days, so be it. I'll go. This is a time when we've got to dig in. If we let those authorities who are not for good and who are not for God, oh, they will say, oh, we're trying to protect people. Listen, the needle has not moved. It is, it is still a 99 point whatever chance if you get COVID, you are going to survive. And the only ones who are not surviving are the ones who, who 
have some issues. And so what I'm saying to those people are we do care for you. We do love you. We do provide for you to watch and be involved with us from home. And we will always do that. We will continue to do that. But we are the church, the body of Christ. And uh, we, we need to gather. So if I'm judged by authorities, if I'm judged by public opinion in a negative way, if I go to jail, so be it. What is most important to me is that we stand before God and said, we did everything you told us to do. And so I, I don't welcome all of that peripheral stuff. I, I don't want it. I want to be home. I, I want to be here preaching. But... Um, what is most important to me is that we say yes to God. We, we have a big assignment, church, and uh, we are going to get it done. So this Sunday, we're going to be here. We're going to be open. Come join us. Uh, we uh, want you to be, we want as many of our church family to be on site this Sunday as is possible. We still do social distancing and um, those of you who want to be here but want to wear a mask, there's no condemnation for that at all. We, we, we encourage you to do what you're comfortable with. Um, but we're going to keep preaching the word and, and we're going to keep worshiping and we're going to keep loving people to life and we're going to continue to do all of the things that uh, God has commanded us and, and called us to do. So um, let me just leave you with, with this thought that um, when, when the church is faced or goes head to head with should we keep our spiritual identity or should our national or local identity um, be first. I, I believe that we are children of God first and, and foremost, and, and um, the church, we just cannot be marginalized any longer. So I'm digging in. I hope you're digging in with me, whether it's here on site or whether it's watching. As many as you, of you who can, come join us this Sunday. 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock Spanish. We are going to worship and receive the word together. Love you, appreciate you, and are so grateful for you and you standing with us. We love the Lord. We love our community, and we provide a safe environment. It's going to be a wonderful. This coming Sunday is going to be absolutely amazing. Call somebody. Tell them they got to get here. We'll see you then. God bless.